Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, thank you so much for joining the Ray's Reflection Podcast. There are a lot of options out there, so I appreciate that you make me one of them. Make sure you aren't just listening. Make sure you subscribe, share the show, and follow me at I'm Nathaniel Reyes. Customarily shouting out our sponsorships real quick. Jocko Fuel, clean fuel without compromise, energy drinks, protein powders, and more. I have an energy drink right here. Mad Rabbit Tattoo Aftercare, be bold, be you. They have numbing cream for all my friends that are afraid to get their first tattoo. They also have sunscreen, which I use in the summer to protect my tattoos. And lastly, A-Rave cards, completing sets one card at a time. Head over to the eBay, Facebook, and their streams on Whatnot to get yourself started on your Pokemon card collection today. Now, intro time for my next guest. The internet is a superpower. In the hands of evil, it'll do some bad things. But when you use it for a great purpose, it's beautiful. Finding out the fastest land animal, you can quickly Google search that. Looking up a word in a dictionary, so that way you don't seem foolish. Getting guests on your podcast by sliding into their DMs and asking them. That is exactly how I got my next guest on. She's a singer, songwriter, with her latest single, Ghosted, out now. Ladies and gentlemen, the stunning Reagan. Welcome to the pod. (laughs) <laughs> thank you so excited to be here i'm super excited <laughs> of course thank you so much for penciling me in around your busy schedule how are we feeling today wonderful how are you feeling <laughs> not too shabby you know i'm 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 going with the flow that's all i do that's i i let my hair down i was like i'm gonna go with the flow today <laughs> okay sounds great <laughs> let's start with this so i looked on your instagram page you travel the globe a lot i even saw that you <laughs> have been to many different other countries you even spent your last birthday up here by me in bean town is traveling something you do frequently yes i'm like a huge i love to travel like that's a huge passion of mine i'm like always shopping cheap flights <laughs> all hours of the day basically i i love to travel and so yeah i like recently i guess i went you so you're around boston so i went there this past summer i've been i went over to europe this past christmas i don't know i'm always like and i went to europe the year before too so i'm just always looking for the next place to go and i like europe is my thing right now and that's what i've been searching all the time and i'm trying to get over there again in a few months i'm like always looking for an excuse to how many stamps in your passport do you have? Um, actually, not that many. So I have only been over to Europe twice. Like, basically, ever since I graduated college, I was like, it was on my bucket list to get over there. And then I thought that that was going to be the one and only time I'd get over there within like 20 years or so. And when I was there, I was like, I'm coming back within the year because I can't not. So I've like figured out how to like get cheap flights, how to use credit card points, how to stay in hostels. I don't know, the cheapest way to get over there because I want to be over there all the time. <laughs> so you know all the hacks and tricks. So if I ever need to travel, I'll, I'll hit you up and ask you for sure. Yeah, I, I'm always binging it all the time, trying to figure out better ways, easier ways, cheaper ways. So yeah, if you need it, hit me up because I will definitely <laughs> I will definitely give you the lowdown. <laughs> Most definitely. You talked about that you kind of ventured into this traveling stage in your life after college where did you go what did you study yeah so i went to belmont university which is in nashville that's where i live right now um i studied so i started out as commercial music i it's basically kind of like a music degree with like everyday music um that you would hear on the radio basically anything but classical um, so I moved over to Nashville. I'm originally from Oklahoma and I just really wanted wanted to keep singing. I originally was just a singer, um, sang a lot in high school um, at all kinds of festivals and different things and kind of grew up doing that. And so all I knew was I wanted to sing. I didn't really know anything about um, songwriting. I don't know. I like did a little bit of that, but that wasn't really my thing. I just wanted to sing. So I went over to Belmont. I studied that for a year figured out I was more interested in like the music business side of things and that there was a lot more than just like, I don't know, music theory. And so I basically switched over to music business with a production emphasis. And so got into audio production and songwriting, um, met a lot of people through that. And so that kind of inspired me. And so I started songwriting. That's when I started co-writing a ton and kind of finding who I was as an artist. Cause that before I just would consider myself a singer. And so kind of switched over through that. So yeah, Belmont was a great place for that. Everyone that goes there is basically does music. So it was awesome. So it's a big music college. 
Yeah. Kind of like Berkeley up in Boston. Mm-hmm. Just like it. I think I saw a video that in 2016, you were Miss Oklahoma's Outstanding Teen. Is this true? Yeah. Well, okay. So I wasn't Oklahoma's, like Miss Oklahoma's Outstanding Teen, but I did do pageants, <laughs> which I try to hide from the internet sometimes just because, I don't know, it comes with a stigma. Yeah. <laughs> so I have tried to wipe it away a little bit. <laughs> so it's funny that you bring it up. You found it. Um, but yeah, so I originally started doing, I did pageants only for a couple years. Um, honestly, whenever I first started doing them, I did not want to do it at all. My parents, like I, I grew up going to voice lessons and stuff. And so my parents were like, you need to compete. You need to get out there. It's a good, it's a fun way to try to compete, try to hear, have people hear you sing, use your talent. And so my parents really were the ones that were like pushing me to do it. I was scared of it. I didn't, you know, I thought it was going to be like typical, I don't know, pageant girls. And then I got into it and then I honestly, I learned a ton from it. I, I really enjoyed it. Once I got into it, um, I did them from, I think eighth grade to like my sophomore year of high school. So, or no junior year of high school. So just for a few years, but yeah, I was the, the pageant girl, <laughs> but I, I learned a ton. You do things like interview talent, all kinds of different things. And you get in out in the community and do community service and stuff. So learned a ton. I really did love them. So it is a part of my past. <laughs> it, it comes with the, t- <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand, you, you know, there's videos of me and my cousins and my brothers, and we've all done stuff on the internet where we put it out 10 years ago. And it's not a gotcha moment because we've all done silly things. And it's like, okay, yeah, that was me. It is what it is. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I'm like, I still love it. Like, I'll still claim it. But I'm like, I just know how people perceive it. And so I'm like, it's just better off that I like try to wipe it. You almost need that embarrassment, though. But Nathaniel does his research, so that's why he was able to find this, yes. Exactly, exactly. (laughs) I I hear you because there is this stigmatization with pageants, but you're right. There are a lot of benefits. You have to put yourself out there, which is the biggest risk, Mm -hmm. I guess, the biggest hurdle. Then you are doing those interviews, and you do have to show your talents, which is what I think the video that I saw where you were singing. When did you even realize that this is something that you were talented in? Yeah, it was really weird. So I grew up in Oklahoma. My parents were from the country. I My parents did sports, like music and the arts were just not a thing in my family whatsoever. Um, so everyone in my family did sports. And so it was just a weird like thing that I just wanted to do. I don't I I think the first time I told my parents I wanted to sing was in second grade. I I told them like, because I think I really loved Carrie Underwood at the time. And I just was like, I want to write songs. And I just told them I wanted to sing in front of these big crowds. Because I remember we had like, I was a cheerleader at the time. And we had this big stadium full of people. And I was like, I want to do this for a living and sing in front of people. And they're like, what do we do with this? Because they had no idea where this was coming from. And and yeah, in like second grade, I would sing at show and tell. Like, it just came naturally. It was really weird. And then they were like, they found some people. Um that were family friends that showed us these musical theater classes. So I sang in those. And then the teachers were like, no, she actually has like a really good range. Like she, she should pursue this. And my parents like, okay, what do we do with this? So then I did voice lessons. And then from there kind of just everything happened and fell into place. So, and I always, it's weird because I would cry when I was a little kid. I remember my mom reminds me of this all the time because I was like, other people get to choose their career paths and like mine's chosen for me. It was like a weird thing that I felt like I had to do because I I just loved it. But I don't know. It was weird. It just felt instinctual. Pretty much. I've always known that it's something that I wanted to do like from a young age. If I didn't do it, I knew I'd regret it. So yeah, it's always just come naturally. It was really weird. Some people show Pokemon cards at show and tell others saying their hearts out. So that's what you did. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It's hilarious, honestly. So you're in Nashville now. Mm-hmm. Where's your line dancing skills at? I want to hear about this. Uh, <laughs> no, surprisingly, <laughs> I've never been line dancing in Nashville and Oklahoma. Like I've done a little bit of it. I feel like at weddings and whatnot, <laughs> but that's about it. I I think Nashville, honestly, yeah, there's some line dancing that I have friends that will do it and they love it, but the honky tonks and whatnot. They're pretty, I mean, they're just like any other bar. They're usually honestly club music and stuff, but country is like the whole new thing right now. So yeah, it's been awesome to live here and see everything change. 
I can do the Cotton Eye Joe. That's a line dance. A lot of people don't categorize it, but that is that is a line dance. You would, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. You know more than me then. I don't even know if I know that. <laughs> Somehow I always find myself in the middle of the dance floor when that song comes on. So, yeah. <laughs> it's natural. That's funny. So we talked about in the intro that you pushed out Ghosted, which is your own work. <laughs> you sang and wrote it yourself. When did that become something that you were going to do? Yeah, so I really, I would say, because I graduated two years ago, I didn't really know if I wanted to pursue, like, doing my own thing or not. Um, And I don't know, I just had this feeling that I was like, I'm going to try it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to get in the studio. I had, luckily, I had a friend that connected me to someone that was a producer, and he, we just like, we clicked immediately. And um, I had been writing quite a bit the year before. And I had honestly, a lot of my content, I just went through a breakup. And so I feel like those emotions kind of inspire you to want to get them out so you can move on and move past them. And so I had written a lot of stuff. And yeah, I got connected with um, a wonderful producer here in Nashville who does more and basically everything but country, which for me is great because a lot of people here do country and that's just not really my thing, surprisingly. And yeah, I didn't even know like what sound I would go for or anything. Like I just kind of, we went through kind of everything that I had written and chose things that had similar themes and decided to roll with it. And so, yeah, that was just something that I felt like I wanted to do for a long time. And um, going through the experience of being at Belmont, I, I saw that there's a different path when it comes to like singing and being an artist. And so it's just something I kind of wanted to try. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, because you're very early in the stages of your music <laughs> journey, right? Yes. Yeah, like this is my debut single. I have quite a few, a, a lot of things um, on the way. And honestly, I've been sitting on this music for a few months now. Um, I think I was done recording probably a year ago. And so, yeah, this is just kind of the beginning stages of everything. So I'm super, super excited. Yeah, it's pretty cool that I was able to have you on. So that way, when you're a big wig, you can sit there and go, I remember <laughs> I did that guy's podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I, I mean, I was so happy whenever you reached out because I was like, yes, this is exciting. I, I want to talk about it. Like this is, you know, it's all brand new, like just the artistry part of it, kind of, you know, the marketing yourself, all of this, it's all new to me. And so just, yeah, it's awesome. Of course. No. And and just for the record, you know, then when you become big, you'll be like, you know what? I'll help them out. I'll, I'll do another interview for yeah, them, you know. Of course. <laughs> Just... Hey, this will make me big. You're going to be big. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm trying. We're all trying. That's all we can do. Yes. <laughs> you talked about Ghosted, some of the inspirations for that, going through a very mm-hmm. tough experience. It, it's hard, right, to almost relive those traumatic experiences or those hard experiences in any circumstance. You hear some of the most impactful songs, you hear them, they're singing about someone's passing or a breakup or something along those lines. And it really is, it's a great inspiration when used properly, right? Because it's a great way to purge out your feelings and to purge out some of just that, I I guess, weight off your shoulders of like, look, it's out here. This is how I feel. So for you, where do you grab your inspiration from, aside from obviously that type of backstory? When you're sitting down writing your songs, where is your inspiration coming from? Yeah, I would say it really depends on um, just kind of the day. Some days it's kind of something I'm going through. Sometimes it's whenever I hear someone say like a certain phrase, I'll kind of write it down because it reminds me of, you know, something or I'd like, oh, I could build a story off of that. Um, Usually whenever it flows the easiest, I would say, is if it's something that I'm going through. Um, I It's weird because I, I always, whenever I was younger, used to be like, I used to hate sad music. And I don't know, I, I realized it's so powerful because it basically moves people through emotions because usually a lot of people can really like, can relate to that. But typically, um, usually during what I get like my inspiration from when writing, it, it really depends on what I'm going through. Um, especially in co-writes, because I'll kind of talk to people, we'll kind of get ideas together, um, or just kind of something I've written down that's some inspiration um, for that day. I'll kind of just try to get it out there and let things flow. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Any other projects coming up that you have planned? 
Yeah, so I ha I'm going to be releasing quite a few singles um, over the next year. I have five more songs that I'm releasing. So this is just the first of six. Um, they kind of have a similar theme throughout them. Each song kind of for me. So whenever I wrote this, these songs, whenever before, I, before we recorded was that breakup period, um, which is so cheesy because I always like, I don't know, breakup songs can be cheesy, but we kind of put a spin on them all. So, but they're kind of different themes, like throughout a breakup. I feel like Ghosted was kind of that theme of not wanting to let someone go just because we kind of changed it a little bit from, um, usually when you're ghosted, you're upset about it, but it was kind of like, I love horror movies and stuff. And so we were like, what if you're like possessed by someone, like you don't want to let go of them and move on from the situation. All you do is want to like think about them all the time. Cause usually when you're ghosted by someone, like they're, they're at the front of your mind. So, but that was kind of the theme for that song. A lot of these other songs are kind of just the stages of a breakup. One of them's about um, kind of a similar theme. Um, not being thinking about someone all the time. Another one is kind of just kind of like, screw you, like I've moved on. It's it, basically they're just each and every stage that you go through before moving on from someone. So, yeah. Nice. Yep. Yep. What's your favorite horror movie then? Oh, gosh. I'd say this is hard. I've tried to not watch as much horror lately because I like I get paranoid whenever I listen to too much true crime or horror. But I, I'd say... <sighs> Midsummer is a, I mean, of course, it's a classic. If you like horror, like A24, I love Midsummer. It is a freaky film. Have you seen it? No, I've never. I don't even know what this is. And I love horror movies. So I'm curious. What is this? What? You don't know what Midsummer is? Have you seen um, Hereditary? No. What is this movie? Oh, my goodness. No. So Midsummer is like, it's uh, it basically the entire time. It's just this feeling of like, uh, I don't know. You're just like your skin, like you're just uncomfortable the entire movie. And it's like, it's really scary. Honestly, if you, to me, like I have watched every horror movie under the sun. Like I think cause whenever I was a kid, my parents let me watch X-Files. I don't know. Have you heard of X-Files? Yes. I've heard of X-Files and like forensic files. Yeah. Yeah. So I watched it way too young. I think I was like seven or eight years old watching these like freaky things. And I was, <laughs> it was too young. And I, I got so paranoid and scared that like, it's been like, for me, my whole life, I've been chasing that high of like, I will never be as scared as I was when I was seven years old watching X Files. So I've watched everything, but Midsummer and Hereditary, like those A24 movies, are freaky movies. Like they make my skin crawl. Midsummer is like, it's about, it's um, Florence Pugh. So if you know who that is, yes, she's I do. Huge. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So she like at the beginning of the movie is like this horrible thing where like she loses. Her, I don't want to spoil anything too much, but she basically I mean, this doesn't really spoil the movie, but she loses her family and like they all commit or I think one of her family members committed suicide and killed her parents. So she loses her family. And then after that, she goes on this like um, trip with her friends. I think they were like in master's school. I forget what what is that thing called whenever you're trying to write that. Uh, a thesis they were writing their thesis and so they went to see the midsummer festival in norway and to write their thesis and basically it's just like this horrible feeling of dread the entire time because they're like they've been drugged like they seem like they're tripping the entire movie and then like there's just it's just like this cult and it's like people start dying like it's just it's very scary it's the feeling of dread there's some freaky stuff it's very gory but that is it. If you want to be scared, watch that movie. It's a good one. I just looked it up. Came out in 2019. So I just looked it up. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's scary. Hereditary is scary, too. That one's like a possession, like demon, like one of those types of movies. Also has a similar vibe. They just, I mean, they make your skin crawl. They are freaky movies. Okay. I was actually discussing this with my buddy a couple days ago. So I love horror movies as well. But similarly to you, I would watch these movies way too young and <laughs> my folks were split and we would always, my dad would take us to Blockbuster or Hollywood Video on the weekends we went with him and we would purposefully rent these, we would rent these awful movies, these horror movies, and we would just watch them all weekend. And so I probably watched a few too many movies way before I should have. But now, like you said, I love them. And now I'm like chasing that. I love being scared, even haunted houses, things like that. I love that stuff. That <laughs> stuff is I, I, I'm a thrill seeker in that regard. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm the same. I love haunted houses too. Like, I just love scary stuff. Lately, I've like realized that I'm like, man, like, because I was living alone for a while and I would listen to true crime podcasts, like, because I was gone or I was alone for like living alone for three months in the summer. And I was just like, man, I'm getting so paranoid. Like, I feel like someone's going to murder me all the time. Like, yeah. So I've tried to back down on watching them a little bit because I'm like, this cannot be healthy. But yeah, I love them. I think they're so entertaining. I get it. Yeah, I, I don't think it's too healthy to live in paranoia. So I'm glad that you altered <laughs> yeah. that, that thought process. Yes, yeah. Th- those decisions. <laughs> you were talking about that that movie is gory. I've realized as I've gotten a little older that I don't know if I'm into gore as much anymore. I, I was fine with the Saw movies. I've had friends mm-hmm. that are like, no, I can't do that. Those movies were fine with me. But I realize now as I've gotten older, I'll watch a horror movie and I'll sit there and I'll go, that was unnecessary. You know, uh, that, that person that person was clearly dead. Why are we still just hammering yeah. this home? And I don't know, like I said, I don't know if it's because I've gotten older. Because a few years ago, I probably would have been like, oh, yeah, that's so cool. Do it again. Do it again. And, and really be into it. And now I'm like, yeah, no. I mean, they're done. Yeah, like I... I used to like eat cereal while watching like American Horror Story. I remember like Freak Show where they're like sawing up bodies and I just like, it did not bother me. And I was like 14 and now I'm like, I watched, have you seen Black Swan? Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yes, yes. That's just like that tiny little gore now. I'm just like, ugh, it like, it grosses me out. Say like broken bones, things like that. I don't know. Maybe we're just more aware. I don't know of like what that pain is. Like, it's just gross. (laughs) I'm the same way. Yeah, like it's like like I said, maybe it's just we've gotten older, so we're like, yeah, you know what? I still appreciate the horror movies, but I will have to check those movies out. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna play a game, okay? Finish the statement, okay? The perfect night in for you is. Hmm. Okay, I am a huge um, Harry Potter fan, and this, yeah. This makes me a nerd, but I think playing, I'm trying to think because there's a lot of great night ends, but I, for me, I love being cozy. So I'm like trying to think of something super cozy. If I take my makeup off, if I'm in pajamas and playing Clue, having wine and watching, maybe having in the background, the travel channel on (laughs) because I love like house centers international or any travel things I think would be the ideal perfect night for me. If I'm in. <laughs> now we're going to flip it. The perfect night out for Reagan is. I'd say the perfect night out. Hmm. I'm from Nashville or, you know, I live here. So for me, it would not be Broadway, like all the honky tonks. I don't think that would be perfect. I think the ideal thing would be a get a bougie dinner with my friends. Because <laughs> that's fun every now and then. And then after that, hmm. I think maybe going to a concert here in Nashville, like, but only for, I, I'm really into going to concerts for like smaller indie bands. And so I think that would be, and obviously having some drinks would be fun. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. That sounds like a great night. Yeah. I feel my best self when? I think I feel my best. I feel my best after I work out in the morning. I'm, I love, yeah, exactly. I, I got into working out, like weightlifting and stuff, probably two years ago and changed my life. If I don't get the workout in, for me, I'm like antsy until I get the workout in. And then once it's done, I feel great. It's like a relief. I'm the same way. I feel like I act like a miserable person. I'm pissed if I'm not working out. If, if it's an off day. Same. I'm in a bad mood. Yes. For me too, it has to be early though. Like if it's like 1 p.m. and I didn't, and I'm just now getting the workout in, I haven't been productive. I'm just like, ugh, it bothers me. Okay, so you have to get it in early. And yeah, I gotta get it done, get it over with. I, I like working out, but I, I gotta get it in early and then move on with my day to like my checklist. Okay. That's my thing. But yeah, until I get that workout done and that checked off the list, like, <laughs> yeah. That's when I feel like best. That's where you and I differ because I prefer working out like 7 p.m. Like I saw something where somebody said 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. I'm a 7 p.m. guy. I prefer being later. I don't no. like to be up. Or, I know. I know. That's a good thing, though. For me, like I'm tired when it hits that time. I can't like, I don't know. Like to me, I got to be like amped. Like are you usually do you have more energy later in the day? 
I would say so. I would say I have more energy later in the day. I think I go through lulls. I I just hate being up early. I'm dead to the world at that point. Yeah. I hate being up early. I'll do it. Like if I if I really had a friend who was like, hey, we're going to work out at 6 a.m. every day. I want you down here. I would be down there. I would do it. I wouldn't be particularly happy about it, but I would do it. <laughs> but it's also because my mornings are so chaotic and so for me, the reason why I prefer later is because I'm the I'm I'm the dude that likes to get a rep in and then maybe change a song, read an email. OK, get back in like 30 seconds. I And I feel like if I do it that early in the morning, I'm going to have to do it quick. And then I just don't feel fulfilled at that point. So maybe that's why or maybe I'm just making a crazy convoluted excuse. <laughs> Yeah, I think maybe that makes sense. Like, you can actually enjoy it because maybe I'm like, since I get up early, I'm like ready to move on. And so I'm like, let's go. Let's get through the workout. Like, exactly. <laughs> and that's what it is for me. I prefer, okay, I just, did a, I just did a rep, get up, go have a sip of water, come back, sit for like 10, 15 seconds. Okay, do, do them again. Okay, good. Get up, same thing. Walk around. Yeah, I will. This is a man trait where like I see men like uh, guys like on their phone forever in between like one like, yeah. like in between yeah sets I'm like my gosh they'll just like chill there forever on their phone and me I'm like I'm on my Apple Watch like counting down the minute and I'm like go <laughs> like get it done <laughs> like let's go so I'm that guy I'm that guy who's on his phone scrolling through TikTok or doing whatever yep that's me yeah yeah that makes sense all right next one. I wish I wasn't afraid of. Hmm. Gosh, what am I scared of? I think hmm. living alone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that is one thing. I, I will say that. That is fair. <laughs> I'm like, what are my worst fears? Hmm. I would say like a big fear of mine is snakes, but I'm like, that's not that big of a deal. I don't see snakes that often. I don't know if I wish I wasn't afraid of that. Maybe uh i would say i wish i wasn't afraid of like speaking to people without thinking first because for me i'm 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 not i'm like i do have a filter and i'm like in my head a lot and like the wheels are always turning and then i like think about things after i said them and for my like my mom for example is the complete opposite has no filter isn't afraid of confrontation like isn't afraid to upset people and like doesn't think about it the next day like i'll think about it the next day so maybe that's something that I'm like, I wish I wasn't afraid of. So mom's a badass. Mom's going to go ahead and say. Yeah, mom, mom. yeah, mom slays. <laughs> <laughs> she is. Which sometimes I'm like, mom, you got to like have a filter sometimes. Like, <laughs> seriously, you're embarrassing me. You're like, mom, rein it in a little bit. Come on now. Yeah, we need healthy balance. We need <laughs> in between. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, I understand that. I, I kind of feel like I'm the same with you. I don't really operate in the realm of fear. So there's not really anything I'm afraid of. And you mentioned snakes. It's funny. I was talking to that same friend earlier a few days ago about snakes. And I don't know if it's biologically within us. I'm not afraid of snakes either. But the other day I was on a run and I just saw one slither across and I just kind of stopped. And I was like, OK, whoa. And, and it was and it was just a tiny garter one. But I still was like, I think instinctually we just naturally stop and we're not afraid, but we're like, whoa, okay, type of deal. I don't know. No, well, for me, I'm a little scared of snakes. I'm not going to lie. I like, me, me and my old roommate used to have a debate all the time where we're like, would you rather be in a room with a spider or a snake? And for me, I'm like a spider every single day. And it would make me so mad because she couldn't get it. Like she was always for the snake. And I was like, you know how you get rid of a spider? Smush. Like, how do you get rid of a snake if it's in your room? Those things are fast. What was her argument? Because I'm on your I'm on your I'm on your side. She would go to the grave on this. She was like, I don't care. I get a bucket. I'm like, no, a snake is way more terrifying. Like, that is way worse. I'm I'm totally on Team Reagan for that. Thank you. I've had more than one friend argue for the, the the spider, or like they'd rather be with the snake than the spider. I've had more than one friend. I I don't know. I don't get it because I'm like they're like because you can lose the spider. It's so tiny and it could get you. But I'm like it's just smush. That's it. The snake is not that simple. You got to cut its head off or something. Like it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> like God. Seriously. 
I actually the bucket is more effective for the spider because if you put the bucket on the spider, yeah, no, literally, I don't. Yeah, they freak me out. We, but yeah, my friend and I, we argue this probably for years, honestly, like because we lived with each other for a while, and we, we would never see eye to eye. I'm just like, I cannot understand that. It's just like a difference in fears. Well, I am on your team for this. I think that your friend you. is absolutely losing her mind. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> I know, ridiculous. <laughs> All right. What's the worst holiday in your opinion? Mm. I love the holidays. I would say maybe Valentine's Day only because it's either hit or miss. And most of the time it's a miss. Yeah. <laughs> like most of the time it's a freaking miss. Or like even if you're in a relationship, you're just let down the person did like they just didn't make it a, i don't know i feel like there's expectations and you're usually let down and then if you're not with someone you're just bitter it's funny you say that i had a podcast out about two three months ago when when it was valentine's day and the whole 20 minute episode is me talking about how much i don't like valentine's day because to me i just think really? it's a, i think it's a silly holiday i'm not a fan of it either i think it's a silly holiday i think if i genuinely love a person why am i gonna sit here and go on this one day isn't that what an anniversary is for? I don't know. Yeah, it's true. That is the anniversary. I don't know. I've always heard, you know, it's a commercial holiday. It's made to make money, which I always hear that about every holiday. You could argue that for every holiday. But, uh, yeah. Valentine's Day. I don't know that I've had a good Valentine's Day. I'm going to be honest. That's what it is. Okay, so this stems from some trauma. Okay, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the Ray's reflection, love is love. I, I, I'm. If you love someone, great. If you celebrate the holiday, th that's just not my thing. I put it, like I said, I put a 20 minute episode of it. It's not my favorite, but I'm with you. All right. <laughs> you just won ten thousand dollars. What are you doing with the money right now? Um, right now, travel. And I would probably go to if I were to go on a trip right now and travel with ten thousand dollars. I don't know. I think I would, for me, go to somewhere on the coast. I don't know. I'm just in the mood to go to the beach. Like, it's that time of year. Yeah. <laughs> it's huge. I'm, I'm, I'm lucky I've always lived on the East Coast, though. I, yeah. We always, we always yeah. have beaches near us. Yeah. Are you close to the beach? Uh, 30, like 45 minutes. Not too bad. There's, yeah, yeah that's there's, amazing. There's several beaches. The farthest ones are maybe an hour, or an hour and a half. But that's still not bad. If you're with friends, no, or that's, that's not the worst. Do you usually take it for granted or like, do you love it? So it's funny you say that. I used to hate the beach. I hated everything about it because maybe this is just me being miserable at one point, but I hated all the sand everywhere. And I understand that that's part of the experience, but I hated that like I would get sand in my sandwich or everywhere, even though yeah. I'd wash it off, it'd be everywhere. But I think as I've gotten a little older, I think I have more of an appreciation to it because now it's more of a, I'm relaxed. This is chill. This is a nice vibe. Yeah. And I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I will say like the beach vacation is always like a parent vacation. Like I feel like parents like to go there because they're ready to just like decompress. <laughs> like It's just like decompressing. But yeah, the beach sucks. Like going to the beach is great. Like packing up your bag and getting from the beach to your car when you're hot and like all covered in sand. That's the miserable part. But like if you can get past it, the best. I love seafood too. So yeah. It's great. <laughs> yeah. We're on the same we're on the same wavelength there. What is your biggest pet peeve? Mm. Oh my gosh, you know what I thought of this the other day. What is it? Oh no. No, I just thought of one that I was like, this is a good answer. I would say like one of them. Man. Oh, you know what it is? When people, whenever you're driving and like you stop your car and let someone in and they don't give you like the thank you, like the little wave. For me, I don't like when people don't do that. I'm like, I just let you in. Like, I didn't have to do that. Say thank you. <laughs> like, it's so stupid to hate that, but I hate when people do that. It's true, though, because it's like, come on now. It, how hard is it to do? Thank you, mate. Like, like yeah. hey, thank you. Like, yeah, or I'll do a thumbs up to someone, like just something, like make me feel good. Like I just let you in out of the goodness of my heart. Like, well, for me though, like maybe I'm 
that's one of my big pet peeves though because whenever I, I just have road rage sometimes whenever I'm driving and so like maybe that's why that's at the, like one of the top of my list I don't know if you're the same way but I like I don't know if something about driving gives me like Ugh. I have no patience. No, I'm a little calmer behind the wheel, but you need that. You need you need both. You need both. You do. <laughs> You're like in the slow lane. I'm like flying in the fast lane, weaving. <laughs> yeah, my best friend, he teases me. He says I drive like a grandma. That's awesome, though. Sometimes I like try to take a deep breath and like get in the slow lane and be like, I don't I have, I don't have to be a target in 10 minutes. I have nothing going on today. Yeah. Like, just relax. Like, sometimes I have to remind myself that and I'll, I'll feel a lot better <laughs> and take a deep breath because I don't know what my rush is. Like, this may be a theme in my life. <laughs> Sounds like you're from New England because that's how we are. We're like, go, go, go. Like, I have had yeah. moments where I'm at a red light and I, I kid you not, Reagan, maybe half a second, the light flips green and the guy behind me is wailing on the horn. And I'm like, bro relax oh. it just turned like that part i'm like I, I wouldn't say i have road rage but i'm like come dude come on man i get it you might be in a rush or whatever but like it, and I, it's not like i'm sitting there like this but you know it is what it is yeah that must be something like in new england though because well like in nashville and the south you don't use your horn that often if you do you're like bruh but I, I like to honk at people sometimes, but only when it's well-deserved. Like, when it is a well-deserved honk, like, that's great. But that's not – like, people don't honk that much here. They will every now and then. And usually if they do, their plate is not from Tennessee. They are from somewhere else. Okay. Because you don't well, honk here. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's it's southern hospitality down there. Yeah. Exactly. All right. We're going to blindly rank singers one through five. One is obviously the best. Five is the worst, okay? Oh, gosh. Okay. Taylor Swift, where is she at in your list? This is a hot take, but she's going to be a number five. I'm not going to lie. Not, a, not This is a hot take. I know it is, but I'm already going number five for me. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I'm with you on that. I'm not a big Swifty. <laughs> yeah. I might be hated for saying that, but I'm not a Swifty. Uh, yeah. People are die hard, so I know they will come at you for that. But yeah, that's going <laughs> to. I don't have one safe song on my phone. Okay. Next one. <laughs> Justin Bieber before Bieber. 2012. What? Before 2012? That's right. Oh, yeah. God. Where is he at on your uh, list? Uh, this is hard. I would say maybe a three. Okay. I don't know. Okay. He's not terrible. I, I liked him a lot in that era. And then I was like a no until like, I would say, what? Like 2016. Like, um... I can't remember what album it's called. It's the one where he's with Travis Scott. That's like the era that I love. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was. That's why I purposely said before 2012 because I know. No, I'm like, no, that's the era. But you know what? Whenever I was young, that was the thing. So I, I did. I used to think he was a girl, though. I was convinced that like whenever he first came out that he like his voice was so high that I thought he was a girl. So did I. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, I did jam to him. All right. Next one. Ready? Mm -hmm. Miley Cyrus, where's she at on your list? Ooh, I would say um two. I'll go for two. Okay. Yeah, I like Miley. Okay. I like her. Oh. Yeah. All right, ready? <laughs> Beyonce country. Ugh, this one's hard actually. It's either the four or the one. Yes. Would that be do I have okay? Mm -hmm. Beyonce country. Oh, country. Yes. I would say four. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not into it. I, to me, it just doesn't feel authentic. I feel like she's trying to ride the wave of what's popular, and that's yeah. it. So, four. This worked out perfectly because number one on your list is size Gangnam Style. <laughs> oh, God. We don't. Hey, I'll go with it. That was my, that was my shit. <laughs> that worked out perfectly. Size Gangnam Style <laughs> is number one. That's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Oh, man, that's funny. All right, chat pack time. I'm going to ask you a random question from the chat pack. All right. If you could have 50 pounds of anything other than money, what would you want? 50 pounds. Ooh. Hmm. 50 pounds? <laughs> anything but the gold doesn't count? Gold, no, <laughs> no saying. gold, no money, no currency. Oh, gosh. Honestly... This is 
No, I should not say this. This is such a stupid answer. I was going to say oatmeal. <laughs> you like oatmeal that much? I <laughs> like oatmeal. But that is such a dumb answer that I don't know if I should go with that. <laughs> I, I just had a bowl right before the podcast. <laughs> really? You? I... I I have like been an oatmeal fan since I was a kid. I eat it every morning, <laughs> like it's clockwork. Are you so maple I'll... and brown sugar? Yes, that's me that's too. That's the go-to. That's exactly mm-hmm. what I had. Yeah, yes. perfect. <laughs> All right, I got one more question for you before we wrap up. All right, what is the next bite in this sandwich? A, B, or C? B, obvious. If you go for C, <laughs> I'm questioning things. B, <laughs> what? What if you go for C? <laughs> Right? Like, <laughs> who's eating the crust on the side? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I- I'm with you. B is, B is where it's at. Yes. B. Eat the meat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Reagan, plug in your socials. Where can people find you, listen to you, follow you, all that good stuff? Yeah. It pretty much right now, everything's on at Reagan Fletcher, spelled like Ragan, R A G A N Fletcher, on pretty much everything. I have a kind of a weird spelled name. So pretty easy for me (laughs) well ragan thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the podcast you are now forever a friend of the show you are just sworn in. (laughs) well thank you so much for having me it's been so much fun i really appreciate it of course that is going to do it for this episode of the raise reflection podcast follow me on the socials at i'm nathaniel reyes share the raise reflection with your friends neighbor anybody else Check out our wonderful sponsors, A-Rave Cards, Jocko Fuel, and Mad Rabbit. And as always, may you live, may you love, and may you thrive. I'm Oprah as a dude, and I love you all.